Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Bruce Sabowski Studio out for some plain air painting. I'm actually doing a revisit to a location I was uh, trying to paint yesterday. Got into some issues with uh, some signage on the building I was painting. And so I wiped it out after an hour and a half of work. Uh, I liked everything else was coming along okay, but just wasn't going to settle for it. So I'm going to give it a go again this morning. Getting there a little earlier this time. Uh, probably about 45 minutes earlier than the light was before and uh, hopes to just uh, get the drawing down for proportion and that way when the lights just right I can concentrate on the patches of color so that's the plan and I will meet you there okay here's the uh, scene I'm talking about and you can see the signage there and I'm gonna give it a go again and hope for a better result this time so let's get cracking Okay, everybody, this is my uh, Gorilla Painter setup that I'm going to be using today. I'm doing a 9x12. I'm going to uh, give it a wash of burnt umber to uh, kill the white, and then we're going to get to uh, drawing the subject. So if you're new to the channel, thank you for joining me. I invite you to check out my other videos and see what you think. Leave the comments in the box below. And I invite everyone to uh, check me out on Instagram and my Facebook page, Habowski Studio. Uh, hit the like button there, and let's get rolling. Hey everybody, this video is going to have some uh, parts be just a little bit of music because there are small gaps in between the actual dialogue when I was on location and other parts to be voiceover. So uh, enjoy the video. I think this version of the painting came out much better. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Using a bristle brush uh, size 6 to get some blocking going. There's some uh, garage doors on the right that I want to get in. And then, of course, the white office sign. It's going to be cool to paint, too. Now, i got to say, since I've been using this ruler technique, I just recently adopted it. And uh, I don't rely on it heavily, but I've really gotten into the habit of using it frequently. And it's really handy just for striking some nice clean lines. Uh, especially if uh, sometimes you might be a little unsteady with the hands and uh, highly recommend it. Of course you can see it has a little grip uh, bar on it and I recommend having that type of ruler so you can grab hold of it. I'm going to mass in some shadow areas. This will give me a quick indicator if it's going to work or not. Re-establish some of the lines here. This particular uh, subject could actually be a couple paintings, I think, and I've decided to close right in on the building and uh, work with the shadows so we'll see how that goes. Now you can see when I was striking the lines for the perspective I was pretty much kind of educated guessing of course holding up the ruler comparing an angle uh, in the scene to my panel and uh, usually going for the ones you know you can nail pretty quickly and then working your way back to that to the more difficult ones can help you uh, uh, figure out what angle those difficult ones are at compared to the ones that you're, you feel pretty confident about. So um, you could get into a perspective drawing with a two-point perspective and all that, but in plain air you really don't have the time. So just uh, mentioning that. Getting there, getting there. I really like using the uh, ruler to establish some straight lines. I don't need to keep those going forward if I don't want, but uh, helpful to have and this time I'm not putting in the sign as you can see it's very uh, prominent and kind of distracting and for the scale I want to do the painting on I'm just going to leave that out yeah that sign that's what got me into trouble in the first version and honestly I just wasn't into the sign I think design wise it's uh, not very attractive and also for the scale I was doing the piece the complication with all the uh, text on the sign you could probably just eliminate some of the text on the sign because no one's really going to know about this particular roofing company. So you can just call it Beck Roofing or, you know, whatever. Just to give 
an idea of the urban setting but I chose to leave it out in this version and I kind of like it better um, it's a lot of effort to uh, in this scale you have gotta have a real steady hand for lettering I like that it's more shadow than light over here it's gonna be kind of cool let's get the cast shadow over here I'm also not going to put in, there's a little red shutter. I just think it's kind of confusing in real life, so when you try to paint it, it's going to look even more funny. Grouping some shadow areas. I'll differentiate them uh, later on. Just want to get some tones in here. Working on back to the garage doors. Okay, it's coming along pretty good. Uh, still working on getting the drawing in. Almost time to uh, start some color, but uh, let me show you what I got so far. That's what's going on. I'm liking the structure of the piece so far. I'm just going to work on the shadow there. Put that in. Start linking up shapes. Just some uh, trees back here. We'll give some nice organic shapes. And there's a shadow in the foreground. I think I might go ahead and see about putting that in. I think it might be confusing. I don't know yet. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Let's see what we get. I think I'll anchor the bottom of the canvas of the uh, panel. I think I might add a few elements here, like a post or something, too. I'm going to knock in a few more windows here. Yeah, I think adding that foreground shadow really helped in anchoring the bottom because you had such uh, some dark shapes up top. So I was really happy that I chose to put that in there. And the window right under the chimney is like right in line with the chimney. I'm moving it over some. There's a couple windows off scene that I'm going to add, bring into the composition. Yeah, in this version, since I wasn't putting the sign in, it definitely needed something in that space, so I chose to bring some windows over. And unless it's a commission um, building portrait or something like that, you know, we're artists and we have to design the scene to make it work for us. So feel free to make some uh, changes like that. Uh, it's not against the law or anything. And as you can see, I'm adding a post here that wasn't there because it just needed a vertical element. So, you know, we can be a little bit creative. Okay, now to start the sky. Okay, so you can see how when I use the ruler, it really helps kind of get some structural lines right off. Doesn't mean you need to do something like that over over uh, over zealous. You want to just uh, be subtle about it and doesn't mean I'm going to keep every hard edge as the painting progresses. It's just useful to get some structure in the painting for this type of subject right off the bat. And as you can see, blocking in with the uh, one tone, burnt umber, it can be any kind of really tone you want that maybe ties in. I like burnt umber because it kind of blends with other colors easily for my palette that I like to use, which is kind of subdued and more natural. and. Uh, gives me that value structure right off the bat. So now I'm going to start blocking in some color. 
I just got to pull out a few more uh, values out of the uh, value sketch here and then we'll get to the color. Just working on the sky here. Mixing a little cobalt blue, touch of ultramarine blue. Not going to get too busy with the sky because it's a supporting actor to the scene. I don't want it to dominate or anything like that. So, just going to frame everything out in the light. Trying to keep somewhat chunky paint. Brush strokes, that sort of thing. Now when we get to uh, blocking in the shadow side of the structure. Sun's gone on me so I'm gonna have to just kind of uh, wait for the light to come back out. Okay getting there. I'm having to uh, remember the strong light. Uh, the sun has gone away. It's bright out but not the not the sun patterns that I had before so I'm just trying to uh, keep with uh, remember what I started with and that's why I immediately blocked out shadows and such with the uh, burnt umber. So now I'm just going to get some uh, shadow in on the garage right over here. Kind of like how it's shaping up. Glad I left the sign out. It was really distracting anyway in real life. So trying to just get a. Don't overanalyze your color. Just get something going. That is probably about you know try to hit for 70 percent of the color you want the value. Can always push and pull a little bit from that point. Here and there I'm putting in a little thicker color where I, I know I want to commit. Other places I'm still brushy but it's still fairly thin. Got to get a tone in for the uh, pavement too but I want to get the foreground shadow in. Mixing a little alizarin, ultramarine blue, a little umber, and really just kind of thin wash in right now. Just want to get a feel for it before I commit. Just getting some average value, uh, values to the shadows in. What's interesting when you do a lot of painting, you find out uh, some methods that tend to be your thing for uh, certain uh, environments. And for mine, plein air painting is, uh, in the beginning, I tend to just put in some wash tones of the local color so I have room to adjust uh, once I commit and get some other relationships going on. I can say, yeah, that works, or it needs to be lighter, cooler, bluer, whatever. If I have too thick a paint, and the adjustments are going to be more difficult. And also, you know, I'm not looking for a perfect color right away. I just want to get an average value and then as the painting progresses and you get all your color patches pretty much there then you can go back and start finessing uh, getting some pushing the temperature of the color or the actual color. And, but if you get pretty darn close I usually try to nail like 85 percent just so I can move along in the painting because time is limited and then I can make adjustments later on and give me enough information so something to think about and practice and see if it works for you. Now you may have noticed that I'm not using a plain air umbrella. I'm painting in direct sun. I'm doing that on purpose even though it's no wind today and I can easily set one up. Uh, most of the time the conditions are kind of iffy and it's just uh, kind of more trouble than it's worth. So I'm trying to train myself to uh, not make my darks too dark and that sort of thing in strong sunlight and I think eventually you do learn uh, the limits you can go for pushing your darks and I just uh, and some and sometimes you do take your chances with it but I would prefer that than having the wind catch my umbrella and blow everything over so uh, sometimes though you can uh, paint in, uh, open shade like shade of a building or something but yeah this is what I got going on so 
a lot of detail to still put in but it's uh, getting there yeah I might catch a little flack for the umbrella thing but you know a lot of times uh, it is just too windy or too risky for that and uh, just more gear to carry I I have used an umbrella just recently I did some painting where it was really hot and I had to and the wind wasn't really there so uh, but it's just good practice to see if you can achieve uh, some pretty close colors if you had to paint in, in sunlight and you had no other choice um, so that you can still continue on and enjoy your your plein air journey and not be uh, disappointed from your gear now I'm going to have to make this shadow a little bit lighter, a little more color in there now that I have a relationship going on that I like with the pavement here. And in hindsight, I should have painted this first because this is a smaller quadrant of color. And uh, it's kind of like a secondary actor in a way. So live and learn. No big deal. I can adjust it. I'm just going to work a little more on the pavement here. to get a little interesting I don't know if the camera's picking up but there's subtle color variations going on within the same value hoping that adds interest there's a few little discrepancies in the pavement I mean just dirt and so just add some interest there Now it's obvious there's a lot more of uh, interest going on in the pavement as you can see in, in the scene behind me but you know we're making it into a painting and I didn't want to close in that, that gap of space between the foreground shadow and, and the distant area by having more dark values just so I'd be too distracting and uh, too much information. I want to have some open areas. So just because we see it doesn't mean we have to paint it. You know you, you pick and choose as an artist uh, what you want to enhance your subject um, obviously tackling first the element that made you stop and want to paint it in the first place that sort of thing and hold on to that and everything has to serve that purpose of capturing that element that uh, excited you to paint it in the first place so getting there about going to wrap it up just doing a few little details for some trees in the background, that sort of thing. Pretty challenging doing uh, structures like this because so much information you have to capture and uh, you got to get proportions right and all that sort of thing because of the way I work, I work kind of realistically so I need to pay attention to structure and that sort of thing. Just putting some interest in the trees back here. Not too terribly detailed because they're kind of far back there. But need something so that's what I'm working on now. Okay, everybody, I'm going to wrap up the painting. I think it turned out pretty well. We'll take a look at when I get home, go over some details, kind of study it and get it out of the sunlight and see what it looks like. But pretty happy with it. The sun was in and out, but eh, it's going to happen today. And I want to thank you for joining me. And again, I invite you to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And uh, don't forget to everyone to follow me on Instagram at Abowski Studio. Till next time. Bye.